Hello and welcome to my channel, Making Crafts. Today I'm back with the subscription box for December for the Not Too Shabby Shop. And this box is full of Woodland themed items. So you get three stamp sets. And the first stamp set is called Dear Friends. You also get a stamp set called Snuggle Weather. And this is the stamp set that I used yesterday to make most of the bookmarks with. I did use some of the sentiments from some of the other sets, but this was the one I used yesterday. And then you also get the Cozy Forest Friends stamp set. You get two packs of ephemera. Each pack matches the pack of paper that you get. And then you get two packs of paper, Snow Critters. And this is six by six paper pad with 24 sheets. And then you also get Phones in Winter. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on the project. So I picked out three of the six by six piece of papers that I liked and I thought looked good together. And all of these go together so you can mix and match them however you want. So for the first one, I'm going to cut it at three inches. So it's going to measure three by six. The next one I'm cutting at four by six. And notice that I'm turning them sideways to cut them. So our pocket is actually going to measure, it's going to be a six by six pocket. So the back sheet is going to be left at six by six. So when I trim these down, once I got through trimming them, I realized that I'm going to be cutting part of my mittens off. And I didn't want to do that. So I can still make this work. So if you want to be careful and fussy around um, an image, then you may want to cut yours just a little different size. So you see here, I'm just adding a few dots of glue because I'm going to sew around my pockets so I don't want a lot of glue that will gum up my needle. So I'm just putting a few dots to hold my paper together until I get it sewn together. Now, if you do not sew paper, you don't have to sew it. You can just glue this. And all you would do is just glue down the sides on the front piece here. And then, once again, I'm just adding some little dots to this one to hold mine together. But if you're not going to sew it, then you would just need to glue down each side and then down the bottom as well and leave the top open and then you would attach it to the back sheet. But since I do so mine, I don't want to um, gum up my needle, like I said, so just adding a few little dots like that should keep it from hurting my needle. So now we're at the sewing machine, and what I do is I take a piece of scrap paper from the same kind that I'm using that I'm getting ready to sew, and I just do a little bit of sample stitching on it to be sure that I have my tension correctly and that I have my stitches the length that I want them. And so for when I'm sewing paper, I put my tension around seven. And so I'm showing you here also that um, for my guide, I'm just gonna use right inside of this presser foot. So it's gonna be about an eighth of an inch from the edge, maybe a little smaller. But what I, for the tension, what I was saying was I set my tension at seven when I'm sewing paper, and then I lower it when I'm sewing fabric. But for your sewing machine, it's going to vary on thread and what paper you're using as well as your sewing machine. So just test it out to see and just sew slowly when you're testing it out so you don't break a needle or anything. But I really enjoy sewing um, paper, so I think it's, it just adds a little bit more texture to your project. And so for this one, I'm just going to do straight stitches and I'm just going to sew around the sides and the bottom. I'm not going to do anything fancy with the sewing. Sometimes I go back and do messy stitches. But for this one, I'm just gonna stitch once around the pocket. Now I do back stitch at the beginning of my sewing and at the end of my sewing. So here are the, is the completed pocket and you can make a lot of these in, at one time. Now I left the threads at the top. It's really up to you if you really wanna trim the th threads really top, you know, close to the um, paper, then just do that. I like having some little strings hanging. So now all I'm gonna do is decorate my pocket before I make the things that go in it. So I'm just taking one of the images from the ephemera pack, I'm adding some foam tape, and I'm just gonna pop it up on the front of my pocket. It's that simple. This is a very simple project. You can do this in the afternoon. And if you wanted to, you could mass make these and make several at one time. I only made one for this um, video, but I think I'll be going back and making several more. So now we're going to make some paper rosettes, and I really love paper rosettes. They've been around forever. Um, I used to make them all the time years ago, and I'm getting back to making them now. So what I've done is I've cut down a piece of paper to one and three quarters inch wide by six inches. 
Then I put the six inch side to the top of my scoreboard and I'm scoring out of a quarter of an inch. So every quarter of an inch, so you're gonna score at a quarter inch and then you're going to score at a half inch, then one inch, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters, two, and so on and so forth. So you're just gonna to score every quarter of an inch. And so until you get to the very end, so your last score line will be at five and three quarters. So now that we have our one and a half inch wide paper scored, you wanna turn it so that your score lines are going from left to right, and we're going to cut this paper in half. So we're gonna cut it at seven eighths of an inch. And that way, we've gone ahead and scored both at one time without having to score such a small little strip of paper. So now that we have it scored, we're just going to accordion fold it. So we're gonna start out by just folding it and I started my fold this time with the first one folded down and I'll show, show in a minute why you have to pay attention to this. But as you're folding this, be sure that you're keeping it um, pretty straight, stacked on top of each other. With this small of a score line, it kind of wants, and the paper is very thick, so it kind of wants to get wonky, is all I can say, kind of get um, crooked. So just keep straightening it up, make sure that your stack is straight so that when you get done, um, your rosette will be, you know, be pretty even when it spreads out and shows its little uh, pleats. So once you get through with your first one, then when you go to start your second one, you want to pay attention to which way you start. So for the first one, I started by folding the first score line down, and you can see it there. It's like a upside down V. So now for the next one, you want to fold up. So you want it to look like a V and make, start your accordion that way so that when you glue these two together, they will fit together nicely and this, it'll be seamless. So now that you have them folded, you want to take the one that is the V, that looks like a V, and we're gonna add glue to the top of that flap. So then once we have the glue on it, we're just gonna slide it up under the other one with, with, that had the upside down V, and that way it's very seamless. And we're gonna do the same thing to to connect the entire circle. So once you connect them, you can just, you know, press it really tight and pleat it together. And I know that most of my viewers have probably made these before, but I thought I would share just in case there is anyone new to Paper Crafted and you've never tried this before, I wanna be sure that you can complete the project because this is a very fun and simple project to complete as a gift. So now I've gone ahead and I've punched out some one inch circles and I'm going to stamp them using the Dear Friends stamp set and it says Friends Forever. So when I stamped the first one, it was I think this was the first time using the stamp. If you see at the beginning, I stamped off on a piece of scrap paper, but it's a little smudgy. So I'm gonna try one more time and just stamp the other circle. And this, I'm just punching these out of scraps that was left over from a project I was working on anyway. It might have been this project, some of the scraps, but I had some scraps left over, so I'm just using small scraps to punch these out of. So that one you can see, it's harder to see on camera, but in person, that one is a lot crisper, so I decide that I'm gonna hold that aside, let it dry, and I'll use it. Now, I did punch out a new circle for the bottom here. So what you do is you just add your hot glue to the circle, and then you're gonna press your rosette into that. But be so careful, do not get your fingers down inside that hole where the glue is. There are many ways to make these, and so if you are afraid that you'll get the glue on you, then don't do it that way. Find a different way to glue these together. But what I do is I just keep my hands on the outer parts where the pleats are and not get down in the circle where the glue is. And I don't glob a lot of glue on yet because we're going to add more glue onto the inside of the rosette when we add the top circle. So that's just our bottom circle to help us get it started, you know, holding together. While it's cooling, before it gets, you know, super cool, you want to adjust your pleats of your rosette so that it looks pretty even. And then I just added a lot of glue down in the center of the rosette, and then I'm just adding this little circle on top. But anytime you use a glue gun, there are other tools that help you press things down. This one, this was not too hot for me, but if it's too hot, then I will use a tool to help me with it. So then we're just gonna add this to the front of our pocket. And I'm just gonna use hot glue to glue this onto the front of my pocket. And 
And so there is our pocket. So now let's start making some things to go inside of our pocket. So for the first thing that I'm gonna make is the pinwheel. So I'm just taking a piece of paper, and first off, I'm just here trimming off the excess glue where I pulled the paper pack apart. Then I'm going to cut a, rec I mean a square that measures four by four. I decided to turn it this way so I could use that bottom strip to make more rosettes. That would be a good size to make some more rosettes with. So I decided to cut it that direction. And then I'm just gonna come back and cut my four inch square. And then the other piece we can use on the front of a card or in this, you know, you could make a tag to go in this project or something else for the project. So I'm gonna use my We Are Memory Keepers um, pinwheel, I think it's called pinwheel, pinwheel punch board, yes. And so this makes it so easy to make the little pinwheels. If you don't have this one, you can find instructions like templates online that will help you make them as well. So to use this punch, you start out by punching all four corners of your square. Then once you have those punched, then we're gonna cut our little slits in it. So I've decided to use pinwheel B because I thought, I think with a smaller pinwheel, I like the looks of pinwheel B versus pinwheel A. It just has a different little, deeper cut into it. So what you wanna do is you wanna line it up with the size that you're doing. And here you see, I almost messed up and I put it on the three inch, but you wanna put it on the four inch and then you know, line it all up. When you pull your little lever over, it's going to put a hole in the center of your pinwheel. So once you have it pressed down into the center of your pinwheel, then you're just going to cut the slits by lining up the little hole with the guide on the pinwheel punch board. So as you can see here, once I cut the first slit, I just spin it around to the next one and I cut it. Now I do find maybe I don't cut everything even, maybe I don't add it to the board exactly right. Every so often as I spin around, they'll be off just a little bit, but it doesn't make that big a difference. That little hole's off just a little bit, but I haven't seen where it harms the um, pinwheel at all. So once we have it off, I'm just going to take a paper fastener to hold it together. So I'm going to first just dry fit everything together without the paper fastener. It kind of gets the paper to bending. And so then I will just add the paper fastener by putting it through the first little um, hole and then just bringing down each hole to the center. And it is a little fidgety, especially if you have hands like mine that are shaky. If you have really sturdy hands, you probably can make a bunch of these in no time. But for me, it takes a little bit of fidgeting with it because my hands do shake so. But um, it's still not that hard to make because the punch board does all the work for you. All the measuring punches the hole. So you've just got to fidget with it for a moment to get the um, little paper fastener in, but it's not really that hard. So I'm going to be adding the paper straw to my pinwheel. And these paper straws came from the Dollar Tree and I have cut this one down, but I will go back and take this one off and add a longer one later, and I'll show you that at the end. But in order to add it, I've just punched a hole using my crop dial, the smallest setting, to punch a hole through the straw, and then I'm just attaching the fasteners through that hole. And I really love how these turned out. So now let's make the bookmark for our pocket. And so yesterday in my video, I used the stamp set and the other paper pack to make several bookmarks but this bookmark is a lot quicker today because we're going to not stamp any images and color them. We are just going to use one of the pieces of ephemera. So the background piece of paper, I cut to two and a quarter. And then for the second piece of paper, I've cut it at one and a half. So I'm gonna come in and I am going to stamp my uh, sentiment onto the light colored cardstock that I cut at one and a half inches. And so I'm going to use my stamping platform because it helps me to line it up and I can stamp twice if I need to if I don't get this, the uh, lettering clear. So I'm going to start out by trying a light blue because I really want the wording to be in blue to match the background blue, but I really didn't have the exact color. So I tried the light blue that I had, but I feel like that 
it did not leave a good enough um, impression. It just is too light to go with that paper. So I'm just gonna come back with a little navy and add it. And I think that this will work just fine with this paper. Now you do see I'm pressing on my stamps. So I don't have one of those um, tools that presses your stamps down. So I just use a crackle medium bottle or a mixed media type um, bottle. Most of those are about that size and it pr works perfect to hold it and press down your stamp. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm going to center up our light colored paper onto the uh, two and a quarter inch background and then just add the scent the um and just add the ephemera piece on top and this bookmark is really quick one to make so once i have all of that layered up i'm just going to cut a small strip from a scrap piece of paper and i'm going to add that along with a eyelet and some ribbon to the top of my bookmark. So here is the completed loaded pocket and I wanted to show you a few more items that I made for it and explain how I made them. Also I just wanted to show you what I put in the loaded pocket because I'm all the, all the time wondering needing gift ideas and ideas of what to put in these loaded pockets or into little gift pockets. So um, and I also have more ideas but it depends on your recipient. If they have food allergies and things it's hard to put food in it but I think these would be great to put um, hot cocoa pouches in. You could put tea packets in them. You could also get the little bags of microwavable popcorn. I think that would be great in the back pocket, but it does vary, you know, depending on who you're giving this to. So in the video, we made most of it, but I wanted to show you, I did make some little paper clips. If you've watched my channel much at all, you know that I love paper clips, altered paper clips. So I just took one of the ephemera pieces and then I just punched a circle of a scrap piece of paper from one of these and I have just added it to the back and glued it together and I used hot glue for this one but you can use your um, art glitter glue and other glues as well another item I made which is a very simple item is just to tie a ribbon onto a paper clip that makes a great bookmark I love using things like this in my planners and so I thought the recipient might let's see what else did I add that we didn't do on camera. Oh, I wanted to show you, I did go ahead and um, add a longer straw. So this straw measures, let me see here, because I did cut it down some. It's about six and a quarter. So I cut a little bit off of it, but um, I, I didn't want it too long in the pocket. I didn't want it sticking up way too high, but I also, you know, I wanted the right height. So I just cut a little off and I didn't show you in the video clearly, but there is the little hole so you kind of flatten your um, straw and put it into your crop -a dial punch your little hole, and then you can just add your um, paper fasteners into that hole. And so we made the bookmark. And so the other thing is, this is just a uh, Christmas ornament that I got in a pack from Walmart. Let me show you here. They, I just found these today. So this is this year's some Christmas ornaments they have out this year. And I thought these went great with this paper pack and with these stamp sets. So I picked it up to go in the pocket. Then I've just added a candy cane and I went with the raspberry one because it matched the pinks. I don't know, kind of silly, huh? They also have blueberries, so blueberry would have matched too. I also have this little notepad here that I bought in a pack of pads. And I can't remember if I got it at Walmart or Dollar Tree, but I thought these colors looked so good with this. So I decided to add it. And then I also made a card. So this was leftover scraps from yesterday's bookmarks that I showed you, and then from today's project. So I just fussy cut, you know, this here, I fussied around this little guy, I made, cut him around so that I could have him on the front, and then this was just leftover from one of the bookmarks yesterday. So I thought that looked good together, even though it's not the same paper pack, I liked how that went together. I have not added a sentiment yet because I'm not sure if this will be a Christmas present or if this will be right after Christmas. So it's kind of a winter theme. It's not, you know, necessarily Christmas. It's so I think you could use it um, in the winter as well. I probably will do this at Christmas, but I wasn't sure. So I haven't added the sentiment yet. Plus, I want to make a personal note, write a personal note inside to the recipient. So that's going in the back there. So I think that is everything that I have added to the pocket. If I've missed anything, just let me know below and I will try to show you how I created it or what, what it, whatever it is, I'll try to answer your questions. 
but I had a lot of fun making this one, and I am, I need to make at least one more and possibly use the other paper pack that came in this set to make it. So if I do, I will be showing you that on um, one of my Instagram posts. I will share that on Instagram if I make another one. So you can see kind of the different color um, themes that go together because this is just one theme, but you could have it more of all blues from this paper pack or all pinks because you, there were several different pinks and several different blues. So you could layer it up that way. But I wanted to go with all three of the colors because I kind of like the blue, pink, and green together. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. And thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.